Welcome back to GoSickamores.com for the Greg Lansing Show. I'm Luke Martin alongside the coach Greg Lansing. We look forward to bringing you this for the rest of the basketball season each and every week. Today, we'll just feature Coach Lansing. And Coach, I got to tell you, first and foremost, it's been great to see you smile a little bit more these past couple of days. I've missed that smile, yeah, my yeah, friend. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've missed it a little bit myself, too. I, don't, I, I certainly don't uh, like feeling the way you feel after a loss and uh, I'm a tough critic on myself, and I, I take that personally. And uh, we haven't been playing as well as we need to. And I'm the head coach. And whenever you put a product out there like that, that you uh, you got to look at what you're doing and how you're how you're coaching your guys up. And um, we've tried to stay the course. Really, we we haven't uh, during that little losing streak there. We hadn't been practicing like we needed to. hadn't played as well as we needed to. Uh, weren't competing in games at the highest level. And then to, to bounce back, we got, we, we got back, kind of turned the, the corner for the better with our practice habits. Uh, the leadership with Ev and Matt and, and Niels have been picking up and getting better uh, with what we've been doing. And it really showed in the first 20 minutes against uh, Bradley. I think we forgot there was 40 minutes to the game, but uh, that looked like the team we need to be to be able to win some games. Before we get to Missouri State and the matchup Wednesday night inside the Holman Center, I know you had some news to share on your radio show on Monday night, and that was the return of T.J. Bell to the program. You really said he's never really been away from the yeah. program, but to really get him back, but also to get him back and being able to take care of some stuff off the floor, which you and the guys know was a really big part that he needed to do during oh, his time away. Everyone has some some things they have to deal with. There's no question about it. And uh, like I said, T.J. was never really away. Here are some, some things he had to deal with off the court, and he's still dealing with them. Um, but he was always in touch with the, the team. Uh, the team was in touch with him. And the reason why this has happened is because, uh, one, the guys wanted him to come back. And uh, two, T.J. wanted to come back. So um, that's basically the way I took it. We're happy to have him back. Um, it makes me feel better. I think if T.J. feels a lot better, uh, you don't know how much you miss something until it's gone a little bit, uh, that type of scenario. And uh, we're just going to welcome him back. and. Uh, keep moving forward. I don't think it's one of those things where you just win one game and all of a sudden things are fixed and yeah. things are great again. But what have you seen from your team since now? It's not that they necessarily forgot how to win, but to finally get those feelings back of, well, we're a pretty darn good basketball team. We can win these uh, games. Have you seen a difference in practice in the past couple days? Yeah, you know, the, it, but it's even before. It turned a little bit before, and we've had some tough lessons in, in uh, the film room watching these guys and uh, going into this game a couple days before that. Uh, after losing the, the, the previous game, we, had a, we we told the truth in the locker room a little bit, and that's one thing you have to do. You know, as a as a teammate with somebody, you have to tell your teammate the truth. Sometimes it's going to hurt. You can encourage somebody sometimes. Sometimes you got to tell them what they need to hear. And we had a little bit of that. I think some guys let out some frustration. I always welcome it because I think communication is the key in in any types of relationships. So I think it helped us a lot. Some guys got some stuff off their chest. Uh, it was an emotional meeting. Um, those types of things are going to happen every now and then, and it carried over to practice. I really think you look at, and I don't want Ev and Matt and Niels to feel like they have pressure. There, there are leaders, there are seniors, I want them to have fun. So we try to have fun, uh, you know, take a little bit of that pressure off, let those guys speak, and I can kind of tell in practice they've always been good, but they've even been a little better. One of the guys, you mentioned the leaders from the upper half from a senior and junior standpoint on your team. One of your freshmen, Jordan Barnes, has really been on a great streak recently. 44 points in his past three games. There's just something about him when you see him take the floor. He's got that confidence about him, and he's always had that really since game one against North Illinois. Where have you seen his biggest development from when you first saw Jordan Barnes step into this program to the JB we've been able to see these past couple of games? One, that's why we recruited him. You know, there were, there was a lot of point guards in that class that we're looking at here and there, but all the coaches, we liked him. We singled him out. Uh, we put him at the top of the, the list and went after him, and we got him. We're very lucky to have him. Uh, one thing that's great with him is he gets to bang it, uh, bang it out with, with Ev every day in practice, and that's really going to help him because JB's going to have the ball in his hands for the next three years. He's going to uh, lead this program, um, and he's just a very good basketball player. The biggest thing is, and what I've tried to stay on him about, and he and I talk a little bit uh, about different things, but uh, away from practice, is every day you got to bang it out in practice, and like Ev does. He's got a, he's got a good guy to look to there um, to be his mentor. And uh, his practice habits are getting better on a daily basis. He's got to continue to get extra work in on his own. And what I want him to do, we're going through that tough stretch with him or, or Q, is don't be afraid to speak. You know, you, you're going to be, you're our leaders for the future. We need you to start developing that right now. And um, 
once you really work hard where you're putting it out there every day you kind of feel like hey I can say something now if you're not doing that you don't hold yourself accountable so that's the biggest thing I think is a day-to-day -day consistency of how hard he's working let's get to the opponent Missouri State caught up with coach Lusk at Missouri Valley Conference Media Day and he was really optimistic about the group he's had this year hey and into the season yeah. I think it's pretty safe to say now that it's come to fruition he does have a pretty darn good basketball team this year from the first time around, such an entertaining game, overtime game in Springfield, Missouri, what do you really want to see from your team the second time around now that you've seen Missouri State once and try to learn from that loss in Springfield? Well, you know, the thing with Paul there, Paul Luska, uh, who's a good friend at, at Missouri State, they've had so many injuries. You know, they've, I think every year they've had some departures or they had some injury to a key player, so they've had some bad luck. And uh, it's a great program. Paul does a good job, and they're finally healthy. Um, and they've they've got a few guys back. I think they have more guys back than most in the in the league because this was a year a lot of teams lost guys. But then they really added some some good pieces. And I like their team. I like the way they play. They're defending at a pretty high level. They're rebounding at a pretty high level. They got a lot of different guys that can make uh, plays. And that's not so much about them. You know, we did have a good game there. Could could have easily won it. And uh, talking to Paul after that, we felt like it was two good teams that both played pretty well and, and went overtime, and they, they, and they got us. And um, the things that hurt us in that game have hurt us all years, giving up some transition baskets in a spurt and then giving up second shots. So hopefully that is going to be better for us. But it's us right now. We want to we go 1-0 on Wednesday, and that's really basically what it boils down to. Well, the past seven years, it's been a split in the regular season series between Missouri State and Indiana State. What does your crew have to do Wednesday night to make sure it's eight in a row? I just think that continue in, in doing what we're doing now. We Our transition defense has got to be good. Uh, we have to be able to finish defensive possessions. I thought in the first half against Bradley, our defense was outstanding, and that's got to be us. We're not where we have to be a better team defensive unit, and we got to get there uh, to have a chance to beat anybody in this league. And our ball movement also was really, really good. I think Ev, Ev had seven assists in that first half. We were just reversing it. It was popping around there. So those are the things we have to do. Uh, and then we got a guard old number 24 there in, a, in the maroon jersey. Alizé had a good game against us last time. And he's not the only good player they have, but he hurt us bad. Yeah, 30 points, 15 boards. That's that's not a bad day at the yeah, office, is it? That, that's day. Greg Lancy numbers back yeah, in the day? No, 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 no. The no, Iowa no, Hall no, of Famer? No, no. Couple, <laughs> couple weeks, maybe. Couple weeks worth of work. Once again, the coach, Greg Lancy. Coach, we appreciate the time, but definitely look forward to catching up with you throughout the rest of the season. Oh, thanks, Luke. And it's good to have you with us. Once again, that was the coach, Greg Lancy. For everybody with Indiana State Men's Basketball, we'll see you Wednesday. Wednesday night inside the Holman Center at 7 against Missouri State.